Welcome to the Russell Hentz Show. I have somebody a little that I have a little bit in common with, uh, only because he is the biggest villain in the history of the game of Big Brother, and his name is Evil Dick. What's up, Evil? What's Hi. up, man? How you doing, brother? How how it's been? Good, good. Everything's all right. I got done with my podcast from uh, Big Brother Canada, and they decided to uh, cancel the show, which is uh, which was a drag because it's actually been better than uh, Big Brother U.S. Uh, last season was a great season. I don't know what the deal was really. Uh, Canada's a very small country, though, uh, so you know the ratings are <clears throat> where a great season here is like you know ten million. Uh, you know, a great season there is like. I don't know, like a million and a half would be like a great season. What, what I don't understand is like in this day and age with all the geo-blocking, it just doesn't even make any sense. Did you watch Australian Survivor? No, I, I didn't watch it, but I read a lot on it. Oh, you should watch it. it that was a really, really good season. And I re really liked the twist that they did. They made it very different. They made it their own. <clears throat> and what I really like about these countries that pick up on these reality shows that have been like in the U S only, you know, uh, well, big brother's been like everywhere, but they, they've been watching the U S version, like Canada uh, with big brother <clears throat> and with Australia watching, you know, American survivor, they finally get their own and they go in there and they play, you know what I mean? Right. It's like they've been, they've been one, they've been watched, but they haven't been able to cause they're not a U.S. citizen. So they get the opportunity. It's like, they don't, they don't fuck around. Can I say fuck? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, don't, they don't fuck around. They go, right, they go right to it, man. And they like they play. There's none of this lay low bullshit. You know what I'm talking about where these people, like, you don't even know who the hell they are until like three, three weeks before the end of the game. And then they're like, oh, now it's my time to start playing. Um, I can't stand that shit, you know? Man, I, like, I like players that play from the start you know what i mean right and like that you sucks that sucks that because i you know i never watched the big brother canada thing but it sucks because it's almost like it's part of the family like the big brother and survivor almost in one you know we are all part of that uh strategic it's almost like uh uh outwit outlast outplay family that we all yeah you know, it's like, and it's, it's a, go ahead Right, it's a different it's a different game, but it's the same in a lot of ways. Where you know strategy all comes into play, uh, you know, fucking people over, backstabbing, so on and so forth. Survivors like you know out in the in the wilderness, and Big Brother's in a house. Uh, you guys are like, yeah. Well, this is what I always say: Survivor comps like people have a lot more respect for Survivor comps because they look dirty and gritty and right. you have bloody knees and shit like that when you're done. Right. Where Big Brother, they put you in a stupid costume and it looks like, it looks so lame, but the, the competitions are just as hard. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right. Even though they look silly. Yeah. So you starting, uh, you, I mean, you ain't starting. You've been, you've been, have, how long have Dick at Night been on the air? You know, I, I started, oh man, Right after I won Big Brother 8 10 years ago, uh, I did um, the CBS.com show House Calls for two seasons. I was with Fox Reality for a season. Uh, Fox Reality had a network back then, and I was with them for a season. Uh, and then I was with, um, who used to broadcast the, um, the Big Brother live feeds was uh, Real Player Super Pass. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I was with them from like right afterwards. I think for like three seasons, uh, and then I bailed on them, and then I started, uh, I started, that's when I started Dick at Night. Damn, so it's got to be about seven years now. Wow. So when's that short, and what, what's the deal with that? I mean, uh, where can the fans hear you talk about, uh, you, do you mostly talk about only Big Brother, or do you talk about other things on that show? No, I do Big Brother, I was Big Brother, I was doing Big Brother Canada, Big Brother Over the Top. Uh, and uh, and Survivor, I've been doing just as long. Right. So where can where you just find where do you find that? So yeah, in all my videos um, over on Vimeo, Vimeo.com. Uh, you know, I usually post on my Twitter, like the links are on my website. If you just go to my website, Evil Dick, E V E L, not E V I L, uh, E V E L D I C K dot com. Uh, so, so you know, I always have banners. 
of the shows that I'm doing and the most recent ones are on top. Uh, so just click that and it'll bring you right there. Um, you know, people, you know, subscribe and then uh, Big Brother's three times a week, Survivor's once a week. And we always have a good time as opposed to, uh, I don't know, some of, the, some of the other podcasts. Uh, I know we're planning on talking about Rob Sester Nino, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but my webcast is not an ass kissing. I got to be nice to CBS. We're not going to say anything about production, the producers, the casting, criticize them in any way, kiss their ass, don't say fuck, uh, and stuff like that. It's just, it's just you know, fun. Right. Uh, and that's why CBS isn't, like, crazy about what I do, uh, where they, you know, robs their golden boy because he kisses their ass. That's not my deal. So. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to do right here. And, and I've been on your show several times, actually. Yeah, we did a whole season together, a whole season of Survivor together when, uh, one, one season. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's back to the point that we were just talking about with, with Rob. You know, I think that podcasts and all this stuff, you know, I want you to be successful. Because when you're successful, in my opinion, it complements what I do. Like if we have podcasts that's, that's boring, then eventually they'll get off the air. But that's not our fault. If they're exciting, they'll stay on the air. And and the thing is, it's like uh, oh, yeah. Rob yeah, has it. Sure. Rob has an ex really good podcast, and he's been doing it for seven years, so he's successful. And you know, and then I, that's all I'm saying. All I'm telling him is, hey, uh, I think you're successful. You know, you, you're doing a great job. This and that. I'm only saying positive stuff. And the time that I say, hey, I'm gonna speak my opinion. I don't think he's a villain. I think he's an all-star, and Game Changers is questionable if you like people that flip-flop all the time. So, you know, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's my opinion. I don't think he's a legend. Well, I, 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 remember, I, remember, I, totally, I totally remember what you're talking about, and it was on Twitter, and it, it came up that somebody asked you, is Rob Sister Nina you know, a legend? And you said no, but he's definitely an all-star. Right. And I jumped in, and I said, yeah, I, complete, I completely agree with that. And then, you know, you have all of Rob's fans going, what do you mean he's not a legend? You called Johnny Fairplay a legend. How can Rob not be a legend? Because Johnny Fairplay said that he copied Rob's game. Well, it doesn't matter. You know, it's like, it doesn't mean that Johnny Fairplay played the exact game that Rob did. He doesn't have his personality. Uh, I don't remember Rob lying about his grandmother dying. That was like one of the landmark. Oh, that, that, that amazing. right there was legendary. Legendary. That was, that was legendary. That was an amazing, that move, so, you know, as far that move, man, that move, it, I, I mean, that is, that's a move for, for history. I mean, saying that your grandmother passed away to get sympathy, I tried to say I was in Hurricane Katrina for sympathy, same thing, same thing, <laughs> you know, and, and, but, but his, <laughs> man, that's another, that's another level. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's so funny too, because they're, there's a really fine line in life between like being like a legendary, like fair play or being a douchebag where we've seen like, even on big brother, uh, Matt Hoffman uh, went in and said that his wife was dying. She had some kind of wow. deadly disease and you know, she had a, a fatal disease. And when everybody found out, it was just like, wow, what a fucking scumbag this guy is. Uh, you know, there and is, they just like, they right. literally hated him for it. You're right. There is a difference, man. Because uh, uh, he, I believe his grandmother was involved in the in the whole gig the whole time. She, you know, he went out there, said he was going to do it. Obviously, because the guy that was the uh, the loved ones visit, he's the one that told him. I mean, it was just that's genius, man. It, it, it is. It, the, you know, and if he's not on a legendary season, it's just it's crazy. You know, they got people that if they're not on a legendary season, then we know how. Uh, how CBS really thinks, and they they want to they want people that they can control. They can't con control well, Johnny. Well, hold on, Russell. You know as well, but but hold on. You know as well as I do that CBS just puts a label on these seasons, and it doesn't. It, honestly, it doesn't even reflect who's in the season. Look at Game Changers last season. Oh my god! Like seriously, dude. Hallie, Haley, dude. whatever her name is, that was a fucking joke. <laughs> uh, you know, I I actually. I actually appreciated Andrea's gameplay this season for the first time. Right. But her first two seasons out, I'm like, this chick is horrible. Why do they keep inviting her back? It's like, I, I just don't even understand it. You know, game Debbie is a game changer? 
Right. She's a job changer. She's not a game changer. <laughs> yeah, she's been all so, kinds of jobs. So, you know, just putting, and even if they called it a legend season, you know and I know that there's going to be at least five or six people that are obviously missing from that season. Right. And there's going to be probably half the cast that you're like, These motherfuckers aren't legends. What are they? Who are they trying to kid? Well, dude, you can, you can miss a couple of them, and that's okay. That's pers their personal beliefs. But the, what they put out for Game Changers, it just didn't make sense at all to nobody. So, you know, they have to be careful with, you know, putting out these named seasons when it doesn't even make sense. Because the, the viewers do not oh. like that, CBS. They do not like that. And if you keep doing that, you're going to lose all your seasons of everything. But you're calling something else. It should have been called Game Changers. You should have been on Game Changers. Richard Hatch should have been on Game Changers. Mm -hmm. And then I get people arguing with me. Well, how did he change the game? It was the first season of the game. You can't change the game when it's never been played before. And it's like, well, nobody expected it to be played like that, including the producers, including any of the viewers. So, yes, he changed the game, uh, without a doubt, 100%. Fair play was a game changer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and those were like glaring, glaring holes uh, in that so-called season last season. Right. But I thought it was, I thought it was just really, really funny that, like, Sir Nino was so butthurt. A legend is, like, a big, a big deal. There's not very many legends because, mm -hmm. you know, if there was so many legends, it takes away from what a legend is in the game. And it's just like, dude, you know, just take the compliment. It was a compliment. No, it was a compliment. He literally thought I disrespected him by not calling him a legend. I mean, I said he was an all-star. He's a great player. But Okay, first off, I've never seen, I've never seen Cesar Nino come at anybody. Like, seriously. <clears throat> right. He's going to ruin his golden boy reputation. Uh, you know, he right. should have just said, hey, you know, let, he should have said just, hey, hey, man, I'll take the compliment of all stars. You know, and just left it at that. But he was so butthurt that, like, he wasn't called a legend. Like, like to me, what this says is, like, he truly believes that he's a legend of the show. Right. And, like, you know, when you said it, I was like, I was like, no, I don't see him as a legend of the show. Mm -hmm. Like, no way. All star, yes, definitely. But right. not a legend of the show. I bet if I bet if you polled like casual survivor viewers, mm -hmm. not these crazy motherfuckers that know what competition was played at what week in what season and you know who used the 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 immunity on this one during that season and so on. You know, not these crazy encyclopedia people, but just the casual fans. I will bet you most of them more more than half for sure, probably Probably closer, you know, 75% or more. Wouldn't even remember Rob. I think that he's saying that because I have a podcast now. And the thing is, I think that we all complement each other. We don't compete with each other. We complement each other. You know, Aubrey has a new podcast now. I said, good yeah. luck. Good luck for her. You know, good luck, Aubrey. You got a podcast? Hope the best. Because guess what? She'll talk about my podcast on her show. And I'm right now. We're talking about hers on my show, and, and you know we, we're having we're having twenty thousand uh, downloads on each episode right now. So we're we're doing well, and I think Rob sees that. And it's it's not like this is an electric company or a phone company, you know, where you you take the whole thing in. You know, one person can control the whole thing and monopolize it. This is podcast. If you have a podcaster, that podcaster listens to. All the shows. He don't. If, if you're boring, yeah. You, if you if you suck, then of course you ain't gonna make it. But if you, but I'm not. Rob has a good podcast. I've always complimented well, his like, podcast. Well, like you said, you know, there's there's plenty of them that come and go all the time. All the fans get in their ear, and it's like, oh, you know, wow, that was a really interesting interview. You should do a podcast. So all these podcasts podcasts pop up. And then they just kind of go away after two or three seasons. Right. Uh, and they're done. And, you know, it's like, whatever, that's fine. <clears throat> but the, the ones with the loyal fans and the ones that actually put on a good show, uh, they have longevity and they last, they last a long time. So, um, you know. I mean, you have Rock to have. has been on a long time. Right. Mine's been on a long time. You have uh, to have a great personality to have a great uh, podcast. You ha it has to be something where they're going to stay watching. But I will always support whoever wants to do a podcast they want to come on my show and talk and we'll talk about their podcast i would do that 
Because I truly believe we don't compete with you. Of course, deep down inside, you you know, you look at the list on iTunes maybe and see where you're ranking at the moment. Yeah, but that's that's personal things for me. I want to be number one. I want to be the best out there. But man, I think we all can be successful. You know, it just but if you if you suck, if you can't if you can't form a sentence and you you know you can't be entertaining, then then you, your podcast is going to suck. You know, that's why yours been going so long. No, and people aren't going to listen, and you know, eventually, you're going to go away. So, you know, when I was doing when I was doing my webcast for free uh, for the first three, I think three years, uh, we did it for free, and I was doing somewhere between big bucks. We were getting somewhere between like six hundred and seven hundred. And fifty for every episode, mm-hmm. and for uh, over, I think we were getting like sixty to seventy, sixty to seventy thousand uh, per episode. <clears throat> so, but for me, it just wasn't uh, it wasn't viable at that time, and that's when I switched over to uh, to the subscription. So, right. uh, of course, my numbers went down, but you know, it's uh, that's fine. Yeah. So I want to get back to Big Brother a little bit, and uh, the sub- uh, similarities between you and me playing you were you were considered and still probably considered the biggest villain that ever played the game uh and and about how many years ago was that uh 10 years this year to be 10 years okay 10 this years month, ago. It's 10 years yeah all right so 10 years ago and it's still standing today i'm sure anybody that plays the game uh, your name probably like mine uh, has been probably mentioned in every single uh season so far and you actually won. Now, what I want to know is how did that happen? Would do you consider your social game a good social <laughs> game? <laughs> the, what it is was with me. It was you have to remember. They put me in the house with my daughter that I hadn't spoken to in two years. Like right. we had a falling out. We didn't speak for for two years. So unlike anybody else that's ever played. Survivor or Big Brother, I had to play out my personal life on television as well as try to win this game. And it, you know, it, it was very, it was very difficult, especially in the beginning. Right. Uh, after we, you know, probably about three quarters of the way through the game uh, is when um, <clears throat> is when we started getting along better and started working together more fluidly. Uh, but <clears throat> what it came down to was. My daughter was very young. She was 20 years old. Uh, she turned 21 in August in the house. <clears throat> so she had that young, snotty girl, teen, you know, almost teen girl attitude right. where she would say stuff that was like supposed to be funny and everybody took funny in the beginning, but afterwards that she was really meaning it, like, but she would laugh afterwards. And then there you know, I still had a better relationship. So uh, I wanted to ask you, did you trust your, your daughter? Did you trust her? Uh, that's a good question. Um, yes. Uh, don't ask me why. <laughs> but, yeah. but yes. <clears throat> the, thing, the thing with my daughter was uh, during Big Brother 5, I was, I was a finalist in Big Brother 5. And I came very close to getting on the show. Big Brother 6 was, um, again, I went all the way through to the finals. In the finals, they asked for, like, a few people that could possibly go into the house to host a competition or some kind of bullshit. I knew they were lying. Uh, so um, Danielle was one of the people that I gave them, and she's the one that they decided on for me as to be my secret partner in the house because everybody had a secret partner in Season 6. Uh, and at the very last minute, they decided that she was too young. She was only 18 at the time. Uh, so we didn't get on the show. <clears throat> and then comes season eight, where not too long after season six, we had a falling out. But in season six, like when we thought we were getting on the show, um, we would like watch, we would lo- watch seasons together, talk about who's, who's fucking up, how they did well, who did well, you know, what good moves, what was bad moves, um, so on and so forth. And, we had like a lot of strategies that we had talked about and planned. Uh, so when she was in the house in season eight, um, you know, we went off to the side into the bathroom away from everybody after the initial 
hellos when, you know, uh, when there was three people up in the HOH room that were like brought in that were like adversaries of other people in the house. And of course I was one of them. So after that was all done and we broke up, we, we both went in the bathroom together and I just said, listen, just go back to season six strategy. Do you think that the, the social aspect, did, your, do you, did you have a good social aspect? Did you have a good social game? Oh, dude, I, did, did you watch my season? I was no. banging pots of pans over the gay guy's head. I was that's, like that's, ripping people like, well, that's what I'm them saying. Left and right. That's what I'm saying. But the thing, but the thing was, you got to keep in mind, is <clears throat> after all of that, like, like what I call hell week, was the week that they put me and my daughter up together, and they were they wanted one of us out. So I ended up winning the veto, and I took Danielle off of the block and left myself on. Uh, and I ended up staying, and the guy that volunteered to go up next to me on the block ended up going home. Wow. <clears throat> but after, after that whole thing, like, was after that whole hell we kind of settled down, I went to every single person in the house, and I explained, I didn't apologize, but I explained why I did it. And I explained to them and I said, you know, you guys were targeting my daughter and I wanted to take the power out of your hands. I wanted to take control of that whole situation. So this is what I did and this is how I did it. It might not be a way that you agree with, but I was doing it for my daughter as a father for his daughter. Right. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not apologizing, but I'm explaining to you why I did it. And everybody seemed to be okay with that. Um, you know, so anytime like stuff would go down, I would like have a talk with the person afterwards. But there was a lot of fights on my season, man. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can, man, I would be the same way. I would do whatever it takes to protect my daughter. I mean, it would be an aggressive season if somebody would mess with my daughter. You know, I, it, I don't know how I can handle that. I mean, you, you know, know. What was so funny to me was, there was some, oh, you know who it was? Did you watch that MTV show uh, called uh, uh, something, a million, something with a million dollars? Oh, yeah, Stranded. Stranded with a million dollars. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, that guy Cody, you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, I did. I did a podcast with him not too long ago, right when it ended. Okay, so, and then we, it, the podcast, right. the sound was all messed up, so we couldn't air it. But, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. So... He got on Twitter and he was like, because I was like talking shit about Cody and Derek, mm -hmm. which are two guys that didn't know each other before the season. And Cody was such a moron that he takes Derek to the final two and he loses when he could have taken Victoria that didn't do anything all season long and won. Right. And Cody jumps in and he goes, dude, you did the same thing with the, your daughter. You're willing to give up your game for your daughter. I'm like, it was my daughter. It's not some dude Hell. I knew for three months. Hell yeah. There's a big difference there. Oh, I'd be with... Dude, I'd give up my game for my daughter. Easy. I didn't even, it wouldn't even yeah, be but, a discussion. But, but would you give it up for some dude that you met like three no. months ago? No. <laughs> no, no not, not a chance. <laughs> not a chance. There's like... There's such a big difference there. There's an emotional difference, man. It's a huge difference. And it's if, a life difference. Now, if you can't, if you couldn't do that, somebody like Sierra that stabs her own mother in the back, you see, I don't understand that. I can't even comprehend that. You know, I, I just couldn't do something like that. Could you? Well, to me, to me, that situation was stupid on her part because her mother was going home anyway. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't have mattered if she voted with her, for her, or against her. She was going home anyhow. So why wouldn't you at least like show your mom the respect to throw, throw her a sympathy vote <laughs> as opposed to, you, you know what I mean? That's because they have something there that we don't know in the relationship that those two have. And that's a different story. That could story. be. That has to be it cause, because you couldn't do that. It, it, you know, most people out there, most people, they're like, no way I could... And if you have the opportunity to throw a name out there that it doesn't even matter and say, hey, I just didn't want to put my mom's name down, I'm sure everybody would understand. Oh, without a doubt. Absolutely. 100%. Um, and that whole thing was just like kind of weird to me. Now, when, when uh, Danielle and I went back on Big Brother 13, 
that was a whole different ball game and a whole different story. You know, I ended up leaving after six days, but I tell you what, we were both targeting each other. There would have came a point in the game. It would not have been like season eight. There would have come a point in the game where, <clears throat> and I, I can I can tell you this with very, with a lot of certainty that she would have been the one to go. I'm yeah. not saying it out of ego. I'm just saying it out of because again, her social game was even worse than my social game. Right. So you know, I had a better relationship with those people than she did, right. which is why she ended up getting booted out of that season anyhow. Um, so. Uh, you know, it, it just would have been a very different outcome. <clears throat> but the thing is, is with a situation like that, th- those are things that can affect you for the rest of your life. Um, you know, f- affect your relationship mm-hmm. uh, for the rest of your life. And <clears throat> honestly, I-, I thought it was kind of fucked up with CBS to do that because what if it had gone the other way, you know? You mean to do what? With me and Danielle's relationship, where oh, we like, hated each other on the show. You know, it, it turned out very, very well for CBS because they got to show the whole other side of our relationship where these, you know, you got these close up father daughter talks where we're like talking to each other and, you know, crying and hugging and stuff like that together, right. uh, you know, over like her different problems in this. But, you know, what if it had gone the other way where it's just like, you know, it just, I don't know. It, it, it turned out very good for CBS where it could have. Could have been very bad for uh, me and Danielle. Right, you know how CBS works, man. I mean, look what they did to Zeke. You know what I mean? I mean, the, the, and, and then and then they blame and then they blame uh, what uh, what's Varner. It? Varner. They blame Varner uh, for that whole thing uh, with Zeke when it wasn't Varner. It was editing and how they decided. Because you know what. Uh, tribal council, they're, sometimes they're hours long. They have tons of stuff they could have aired, but they decided to air that. Don't throw it on somebody else's back, CBS. It was CBS that decided to throw Zeke under the bus. You know? Hey, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I agree with that to a certain degree. Uh, to a certain degree, you know, you sign away your life and what you say on the show, they're going to air. Uh, uh, I, I agree with production. Of, I agree with production. I agree that they have to do what they have to do. But don't put it on Varner. I mean, yeah, Varner's the one that brought it out. I get it. They have to They have to uh, make a show. I get that too. But, man, at the end of the day, Jeff could have been like, you know, we have to air it, that kind of thing. We know Varner, had, you know, he, he made a mistake immediately when he said it. I seen it in his eyes that he knew he just, you know, he's in the zone. You know what I mean? Warner's in the that, zone. That, so, Russell, that still wasn't the first time that CBS had aired something like that. Boston Rob outed John Carroll uh, <laughs> as being gay uh, in a tribal before. Wow. You know, so they they really? had done that before. Yes. I mean, but... And, and here, oh, okay, here's another thing. Remember, let's go back to Big Brother 15 <laughs> with uh, uh, your friend Aaron, uh, who's like, was on the biggest racist season of the uh, of the entire series. Um, actually, I call it the, the racist season. There was so much, so many racist slurs being thrown right. around uh, on the feeds and stuff that they. But you have to say, man. To put- you have to say that that uh, you get in a place to where you're not usually in in your life. You get in that place. I know. You know. It did. I watched it just the other day. Clips of it, and and I was embarrassed for for her what she was saying. But I've talked to Erin personally, uh, you know, behind closed doors, and she was like, she she was completely apologetic, and it, you know, uh, t- towards the whole situation without it being public. I'm not trying to uh, really take up for her. I'm just saying when you're in situations like that, when your mind is being consumed with gameplay, I don't think you think right sometimes. But you, you, dude, you, you have to listen. There was plenty of times in the house where I would get into fights with my daughter, and I just like wanted to go off. But you know that there's cameras around. You hold your tongue, and you're aware that it could go on the show. Right. And on Big Brother, it doesn't even matter if it goes on the show because it's going to be going out of the live feed. So you know you have to like check yourself. 
And if she's like so unaware that she had no idea that she was even like that those things would be taken as offensive, like seriously, come on now. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, some but, people but, aren't but, as but, strong as others. Some people can't control their emotions like others can. You know what I mean? Well, you you've got to be able to control your mouth, especially in this <laughs> uh, politically correct, correct climate of today. Right. Uh, my whole point of bringing up that racist season of Big Brother 15 <clears throat> was CBS was all, you know, we don't condone this, you know, we don't approve of this, but we're going to show it to you just because this is what's going on in the house. But right. then what did they do? It was like two seasons later on Survivor, they cast John Rocker, who's the biggest racist in all of professional sports. Right. And they put him on Survivor. And, you know, to me, that, that just came off as so, so hypocritical. It was, I, I was like stunned. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, how can you say, you know, out of one side of your mouth, we don't condone, we don't condone this, this, all of these racist slurs being talked, but you know what? We've got us good ratings, so we're going to put on the biggest racist in professional sports on Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, seriously, it's like, come on, who the fuck do you think you're kidding? Right, I mean, that gives Brandon hope to play again. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm not saying, Brandon's far from racist, but some of the things he says, we have to edit out of our Bachelorette feed because he, the dude is like, he talks real. He's not racist, but he's considered one of the most unstable person, you know, to ever play Survivor. But hey, if you, you know, got, if you got John Rocker out there, they already know how he is. Maybe Brennan has another shot. Uh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, you know what? Okay, this is my take on uh, uh, on your nephew. <laughs> his first season, his first season, he came off like a crybaby. He was all, you know, oh, oh my God, this girl Michaela. Is Making, giving me simple thoughts. Dear Lord, help me. We got to vote her out. I'm right. getting simple thoughts. My, my pants are on fire. My penis is hard. And then he, all of the crying and all of the whining and this and that, like he was labeled a pussy the first season. Right. So his second season, he was bound and determined to change right. that image of his, himself. So he went in and just was like, I'm going to be the biggest <laughs> badass that's ever been in the game and I'm going to pee in the beans and I'm going to pee in the rice and mm -hmm. I'm going to shit in your corn and, you know, <laughs> all the right. good stuff. And, you know, instead of, you know, but this comes with being young, man. You lose sight of what's important. And what's important, what's important is there's a million dollars on the table, motherfucker. Right. And check your, check your ego. Who cares if they're saying that you're a crybaby pussy? If you walk away with a million dollars the next time, you give them a big fucking two middle fingers if anybody calls you a crybaby pussy the second time. Yeah, and I think that's a that's kind of point on. He and not only was he trying to do that, he had big shoes to fill, and I think that he was getting oh so much dude, without a doubt. <clears throat> he was getting so much bad publicity for not being like me or this and that. It was almost not fair for Brandon, and it's equally not fair that they because they literally. They're not going to give Brandon another chance, and and I think that's a little messed up, you know, because this is all they're doing, really. I mean, he's a child. He was well, a child, you know. <clears throat> oh no, absolutely, and the same thing with my daughter. Like I said, she was she was twenty years old when she played the game the first time, right. so you know she was she was very very young. Uh, but you know, then again, when she came in to play her second time, which it's very we got the similarities here between your nephew and my daughter with the trying to come out from under the shadow of him with you and my daughter with me. Right. And all Danielle, Danielle was all about the next time that she played was like, <clears throat> she wanted to come out from under my shadow. And it's like, big moves, big moves, big moves, big moves. She must have said big moves in the diary room. Like literally, I'm not kidding you, at least 20 or 25 times. Huh, and, you right. know, it's like big moves, big moves. Um, you know, I got to make a mark that big moves and do this and da, da 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 and all this stuff. Instead of there's times where you just need to kick back, put your arms back behind your head and put your feet up for a, a week or a few days right. and just relax and let the game play. You don't have to be, you know, constantly at it, at it, at it, at it, at it. 
Um, you know, there's times where you need to be at it, and there's times where you need to just chill the fuck out. Well, there's t- I'm going to get your opinion on this because I know you, you're friends with her, but there's times that, uh, you, you know, when you don't make big moves and you just flow with the, you go with the flow, that uh, you get all the way to the end and you win twice. And then there's times that you, when you actually try to play the game, that you get voted out early. So what do you think about Sandra... She, you know, she actually was playing the game, like kind of like Andrea. Sandra was actually playing the game this time, and when she did that, and she didn't uh, adopt what she always said, and what she always said was, as long as it's not me. Well, she, right. she actually tried to play the game this time, and she went home early. Well, too, she, she had a much bigger target on her after winning twice. But you are right. And, you know, she did, like... How many times did she call herself the queen? Right. She was much more, she was much more humble her first two times playing mm-hmm. uh, than, than this time for sure. Um, yeah, I, 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 I agree with you um, where I was, listen, dude, I was never a fan of Sandra's play. I love Sandra personally. We're very good friends. Uh, but I was, I was never a big fan of her style of gameplay. Let yeah. me put it that way. <clears throat> well, what she, um, I tell you what she was doing when calling herself the queen she was trying to implement her her as the queen. Because I can remember me, Sandra, and Porvity all being together. And I'm calling Porvity the queen. And then Sandra is like, no, I'm the queen. I'm a two-time winner. I'm the queen. I'm the queen. So what she was doing that season was trying to implement that title like King Russell did. She was trying to impl- <laughs> she was trying to implement that title to her name. So it's kind of funny uh, that I started uh, calling myself King, uh, you know, season nineteen, and it worked for me. Then all of a sudden, here comes Sandra, and she's trying to implement herself as the queen, which she is not, in my opinion. She is a two time winner, and she is a legend. But the queen of Survivor, by far, is Poverty Shallow, in my opinion. I, listen, I think that Parvati is one of the best players, uh, and it's uh, very disappointing to me that she said a number of times that she's never going to play again, uh, because I would love to see her play again. She was a great player. <clears throat> um, I really enjoyed that. See, listen, your first season was like, nobody knew what the fuck to make of you, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everybody said you either loved you or hated you. Me, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I would laugh my fucking ass off. Uh, you know, every time you would pull some shit. I thought that uh, Samoa was such, such a great season. <clears throat> and then, uh, what was the uh, the next season? Was Heroes versus Villains, right? Heroes versus Villains, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, <clears throat> um, Samoa hands down. I thought you should have won. Uh, you know, but the the jury was bitter, and they're not going to give it to you. Uh, in, in even in uh, Heroes versus Villains. <laughs> you and Parvati, you and Parvati like played circles around everybody else. Right. Um, you know, it was like uh, there's there's no way um, that you guys shouldn't have won. Right. Uh, one of you two, one of you two should right. have won that season. Let me ask you a question, so, and this is something I said on a radio station earlier. I I would think it's extremely interesting, and 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 think about it on the side of Big Brother Two, like if they would do this this type of season. If they did a Heroes versus Villains 2, like they do uh, you know, Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier, part two, when it's usually the best, best fights ever. If they thrown the exact same cast out there, the exact same cast, and then you have to decide. That means I'm out there with Boston Rob again. That means we have to decide what to do if we're going to go the same route or different. Hey, I stabbed. I didn't really stab Jerry in the back. She went all the way to the Final Four. I don't get that. But anyway, you know, is she going to side with me or is she going to side with Rob? What is she going to do this time? You know, uh, I think it would be an extremely interesting season. Like, for instance, if they did another season, a big se- big name season for, for uh, Big Brother, if they threw you guys out there exactly the same way, what would happen? I think that's... What do you think about that? I I don't know. I think it would be... I think for Heroes vs. Villains, it would be very interesting to see uh, even the same cast again. I wouldn't be against it. Uh, so far as Big Brother, eh, I, you know, the All-Star season, I don't think... They're never going to do another All-Star season. The, the ratings weren't great when they did it in Season 7. 
uh, 11 years ago. <clears throat> uh, as a matter of fact, CBS was actually thinking about canceling Big Brother, um, you know, uh, at that point, and they gave uh, uh, they got rid of the executive producer and they uh, promoted the uh, number two EP to executive producer <clears throat> and uh, told her that she had one season to get it back on track. Uh, yeah. And that, and let me tell you, she just happened to get lucky that I was in the cast. And yeah, yeah, I said it. I said it. Oh, no, I said that, too. Hey, man, it is what it is. There's one thing that, I, you know, believe it or not, there's not much I'm cocky about. But one thing I am cocky about is how I played that game. I think it was one of the best performances in the, in the history of the game. I think you had one of the best performances. Now, when everybody's like, are you the best winner for you? Or, you know, if Russell should have won, hey, or am I the best player? You know, you definitely can debate if I'm the best player because, because I didn't win. You can debate if you're the best player because you won, but it's a debate. You know, it's a debate. Well, and there's there's never ever settling it. You know, that's the thing. It's like you know, you could say that. Uh, here's a here's a prime example. Uh, Derek in Big Brother 16, great winner, but he had one of the stupidest casts of all time. And, yeah. and I'm not. I I'd be very very serious. These people were. Like inexperienced, so many of them had never seen the show before, and they, like literally, it was one of the stupidest casts that they've ever. Yeah. I bet if they did an average IQ cast to cast to cast, that cast would have the lowest IQ out of all eighteen seasons. It reminds me of Boston Rob's cast with uh, Redemption Night. Oh, uh, you know, let me tell you. Let's talk about Boston Rob for a minute. <laughs> okay, nice guy. let's do that. Very, very nice, very nice guy. You know, he came up and introduced himself to me, I don't know, like four years ago or something. He's like, mm -hmm. oh, Evil Dick, I've been wanting to meet you. Right. <clears throat> and, but for me, I don't think that Rob should have even been cast a second time on All Stars. Mm -hmm. He sucked his first season. He didn't even make jury his first season. I, di I didn't see, I, I just, I didn't see why they brought him back. Well, he was buddies with but, Jeff. That's why. Yeah, that, Exactly. Yeah. And but at, let me tell you, after All Stars, he made his mark. And what is the most memorable thing that he did? Fucked over Lex, right? Right. With, uh, Amber. Right. You know, and but that stop it. But that was a really big. It was a really big, very memorable move. That was like you know shocked everybody at the time, and was like everybody was just like, oh my god, that was so awesome. Uh, you know, so he made his mark there. <laughs> the third time he played, I didn't think he did anything great. And then here you go, his fourth time, it's like, well, are they going to keep putting him? Oh, and in between, they put him on Amazing Race twice. <laughs> it's like, you know, it, it's like CBS was so bad and determined to like, help this guy win some money. Uh, you know, they, they aired his wedding to Amber, like all of this shit. And it's like, you know, holy, what the fuck is going on? Just write him a check already and stop putting him on the show. Right. And then uh, when, they did, when they did put him on the fourth time, I liked how everybody on his tribe was enormous fans of his and would have done anything mm -hmm. for him. Yeah. Everybody on your tribe hated you. Yeah. Don't tell me that this was not planned out by casting. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, I can neither accept or deny that fact, but you, <laughs> you are exactly right. Everybody, there's only one person on my tribe that liked me, and that was Stephanie Valencia. Even my alliance, Krista, didn't like me once the show started. So nobody was a fan of Russell Hance. In their application, they said they was not a fan of Russell Hance. So, so you know, well, it is what it is. That's something, that's, listen, that's something that people that, like, uh, normal viewers, they have no idea about either. But they do ask you, when you're in casting, Who's your favorite player? And, you know, who, who do you hate the most? Who do you like the most? Who do you hate the most? This is almost like a standard uh, question right. in casting mm -hmm. if the people are fans of the show. Um, so, yeah, without a doubt, um, they knew I who think, liked Rob yeah. and they knew who hated you. Uh, and think, your tribe hated you. Dude, your tribe hated you so much that they threw the competition. Ten days. To just get you voted out. Ten days into a challenge, you throw a competition for a million dollars. I mean, who does that? It's like, holy Rock. smokes. Look, hey, I got the weenie on that season. I got it good without lubrication. 
<laughs> so, <you know. laughs> but anyway, man, I want to know who's your favorite because I, you know, I see you uh, tweeting on the, the Big Brother stuff, and I see a lot of people you don't like. But I want to know who first. Who's your favorite player that ever played the uh, uh, the game of Big Brother? Um, I love Dr. Will. Uh, Dr. Will was on season two. He won mm -hmm. season two. They brought him back for All Stars. Uh, he ended up coming in fourth for All Stars, but his his Chilltown Alliance member Mike Boogie ended up winning All Stars. Uh, but Dr. Will, um, Dr. Will is the best player right. that's ever played the game. Uh, oh. <clears throat> back in season two, they didn't have any veto competition. There was no vetoes that you used. You were nominated, and one of the two people on the block were going home. There was no. There was no chance to save yourself with a veto or any of that crap. And Dr. Will was so hated in the house. And it was like that season was so funny because he, <clears throat> they would go up to him and like he'd go, you know, listen, I'll do whatever you want. And he's like, okay, well, you know, I need you to vote this way. He's like, you're going to do it? Yeah, I swear, I swear. You're not going to not gonna screw me, right? You're going to do it. Right. Yeah, yeah, I swear, I swear. And then the time came and he would vote the other way. And he's like, well, what happened? He's like, oh, wow, dude, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm not sure. <laughs> da, 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 da. And he'd make up some bullshit excuse. Right. And they would go right back to him the next week and try to make a just to deal with him again. Right. It was so fun to watch him work. Uh, it was just so enjoyable. And even in season seven, the all-star season, <clears throat> he ran that alliance with him and Boogie. Uh, you know, it was all his strategy, so on and so forth. And, you know, uh, Mike Boogie just was like kind of rode his coat. Just, I like Mike Boogie, don't get me wrong, but I don't think that Boogie's a good player. Right. Uh, even though he did win All-Stars, I just, like, if I was thrown in a season to play against uh, uh, Dr. Will, I would be worried. If I was thrown in a season playing against Boogie, I wouldn't even give it a second thought. Right. Like, it, like I wouldn't be worried about that guy at all. Right. And this is a two-part question uh, because, you know, I want to know who... Your favorite, I mean, no, no, I'm sorry. Who was the worst winner and who is your least favorite to ever play Survivor? So who's the worst winner first? Hmm, a Survivor? Yeah. To be honest with you, Survivor has had so many bad winners. I, know, I, need, to know the, I need to know your worst. Is it season 15, the red-headed guy? What's his name? Oh, you're talking about Big Brother? Mm-hmm. No, Big Brother. Yeah, oh, I'm Big sorry. Brother. Oh, okay, I thought you were talking Survivor. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy was a terrible winner. Nicole last season was uh, another bad winner. Steve in season seventeen was another bad winner. They've had a like they've, they've had a pretty good string of. Uh, but of who do you think is the, if you had to choose one, you have to choose one. Who's the worst winner in Big Brother history? Wow, it's really a toss-up between Andy and Steve, but I'm going to go with Andy just because he's so irritating. So that's season 15, right? Yeah, I would have liked that. If I played against Andy... Now, I put Andy down... Never, he, I wrote down... Fifth, I wrote down 15. 15 before you even answer that question, season 15. Yeah, he was, he was an absolutely horrific uh, winner. That, the final three for that season was probably the worst final three of all time. Was... Uh, Andy, Gina Marie, and uh, Spencer. I love Spencer to death. He's a great, great guy. I really like him. But he was on the block like a hundred times that season. Like, you know, week after week, he was like a professional pawn. Uh, he had absolutely no, no chance of winning whatsoever right. Right. Uh, against anybody. <clears throat> and uh, just because he didn't do anything. Yeah. And Gina Marie was, Gina Marie was terrible. Andy was terrible. It was, that was a season that, like, the players, you have seasons like this, even on Survivor. When you have people that play, they, they play too hard, too fast. And you usually have like one or two of those, but that season had a lot of them. And the, the best players or that had the, the players that had the best potential uh, took each other out early in the game. Right. So you're left with all of these really shitty schlubs at the end of the game. Right. And I like, uh, you know, I, I thought that was kind of the only season I've ever, that was one of the only seasons I've ever watched, actually. Oh, you watched one of the worst seasons. <laughs> I need to step up my game, man. So who is, <laughs> who is your least favorite player? Like, who is that person that you, like, there's Sandra for me. Now, who is, who is that Sandra for you? 
I seen you recently. I, don't know, I, don't... I seen you recently put like a a penis head on top of uh, Cody's head. <laughs> he's yeah, yeah actually. He's a, Cody he, and his brother. Cody's a good-looking Cody guy, man. Cody's a good-looking guy. You got him looking like a penis now. Uh, Co Cody at least was had a circumcised penis on his head, where I put uh, his brother Paulie with an uncircumcised <laughs> penis on his head. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> so who's a better player, Polly or Cody? Oh, dude, they're both they're both terrible. Who's better? Uh, I'm like, uh, I, you uh, got to tell well, me. Well, the, 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 the better of the two was Cody, uh, because actually Cody should have won. If Cody wasn't such a moron, he would have won. Uh, it, you know, it was like, you know what, it's, it's a very good comparison of Wu taking Tony in Survivor to the end, uh, when Wu could have won that season, and he takes Tony, who everybody knows that he was going to lose against, where, you know, Cody could have taken Victoria, that she was nothing but furniture all season long. Uh, so, you know, and he could have won easily, but instead... He's like, uh, I'm going to take my bro, man. Yeah, we're bros. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're bros. And he loses, you know, yeah. to uh, one of the better players that's played the game. So, right. So uh, when I at, at give kids the world, I'm going to bring this up because I was I, I was right there. I was walking down the steps uh, in the lobby, and all of a sudden, I see you uh, throwing somebody's ball, like somebody's in your face. You pushing and shoving, and I'm like, what's going on here? Do you know that moment I'm talking about? Are you talking about Cody? Yeah, it was it Cody there or was it? I thought it was that the other one that was in that group. What was his name? Oh, uh, Zach. 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 Yeah, Zach. Oh, uh, you know, here's the story with that. I like literally the night before I had Zach on my webcast, and I thought I was being really, really cool with him, mm -hmm. and I thought I would put him on with a. Uh, I had him on with James Ryan, who was on Big Brother 6 and Big Brother 7, and I brought a celebrity on. Uh, everybody knows Shannon Elizabeth uh, from uh, American Pie. She was the uh, foreign exchange student. Okay. You know who I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I thought it would be like cool and bring Zach on with the celebrity, and he just he just totally dissed her and like just treated her like shit. Like oh, it no. was just uh, like amazing to me. And so she made a joke. Uh, something about uh, him being gay with Frankie. Just it was just uh, it wasn't even a big joke. It was just like a side, just a, like a little side swipe. And he got so butthurt, and you know, he said, "I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave." And I, I, honestly, at, this, at that point, I should have just said, "You know what, motherfucker, just get out of here." Right. Uh, but you know, I just I stuck with him, and <laughs> he ended up leaving the uh, webcast early, uh, and we just like laughed about. It. We laughed at him after he left. It's like, what the hell was that? It's like, oh my God, what a fucking douche, man. He's really turned it. His ego's gotten like out of control since the show. Right. So, uh, so at the uh, uh, Give Trips the World uh, uh, charity, here comes Zach. It's literally the next day, and he's got his phone on live streaming where he's getting fans to give him money. So what? he's at he's at a charity event, and he's using the charity event to make money for himself. Wow. Does this not sound kind of like underhanded to you? I don't like that, man. I mean, I don't know that yeah. to be the case. Was that the case? Because oh, no, dude, that is, the, that is 100% the case. Uh, he was broadcasting on You Now, where these people, like, you know, they donate money and shit like that. <clears throat> and that's how he was making money at that time. Okay. And he comes up to me and he's like, hey, say hi to everybody. He's got his phone up. And I'm like, dude, get your fucking phone out of here and get the fuck away from me. And he's like, oh, come on, man, just say hi. And I'm like, fuck off. I'm like, I'm telling you, I am going to break your phone if you don't get it out of my face. And he kept on and kept on. So I grabbed his phone and I threw it, I threw it across the room. And like you see, you see like... <laughs> That's when I walked down. Dude, you've got to go on YouTube and look at the video. Just search um, Evil Dick, Zach, and Phone. And, oh, you, uh, just, you, just got 20, 000, you just got 20,000 more downloads. Because <laughs> everybody <laughs> I, I needs to that see phone. that. I'm going to do that. I threw that phone, and you see ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor, and then the phone's spinning around on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes over and grabs it, and he's all looking at it, and he runs down to the lobby, and he's like telling a cop that like I assaulted him or some kind of shit like right. this. He's trying to get me in trouble. And I just laughed it up. 
And honestly, I don't even do that charity anymore. There's just too much drama. Oh, man, I don't either, man. I don't either. It, I mean, it's a great that, organization, but it is too much drama that cannot be contained. And, you know, uh, uh, I don't do it anymore either. And I don't do it anymore not because uh, of of uh, the charity, because I think it's wonderful. The The personalities there, it's just too much. You know, and it's always something, well, always something. Didn't you get into it with Eric uh, from Amazing Race? Shit, I got into it with a few people. I mean, something happened yeah, last time. I mean, I don't... I don't even know. I have to be like, and another thing, you know, I go there, I, they have that big party at the end, I start drinking, I drink too much, and then I don't know what the fuck happened. It's like, what did I do? Oh, you almost got in a fight with this guy from a Brains, Brawn, and Beauty. I don't even know his name. And then I'm like, uh, but Eric, the guy from Amazing Race, yeah, he, he went up, to, something happened to where he was like, he kept looking me across the bar. Okay, now I'm like, leave me alone. Then he kept looking at me. It had something to do with Kelly Sean uh, from uh, Purple Kelly from Survivor. It was a girl. Okay. I guess it was a girl thing. But he liked her. And, and uh, something happened where he was all upset with me. And he kept looking at me from across the bar. And I'm like, look, this dude needs to stop looking at me. And I'm drinking tequila. So that's never a good time to, to come at me like that. I said, he needs to stop looking at me. So then he keeps kept looking and he starts laughing and pointing at me. Like I'm trying to, my, I'm at a charity event. I'm trying to mind my own business. He starts pointing at me. So then I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. So I put down my drink. I go over there. I said, you need to keep, keep your eyes off of me. And he's like, well, what you going to do? And I said, dude, you better leave me the fuck alone. I'm telling you. I'm in a I'm in a world, in my world, we fight when this kind of stuff happens. You're in that little reality world still. Like my world hurts. Yours, you just think this is, you know, a TV camera's here. You need to leave me alone. And then he's like, What you gonna do? What you gonna do? And he's like smiling and laughing. Dude, I had enough. I push him as hard as I can. He flies on the ground. And then he he gets up and like, security, security, security. I'm like, this fucking pussy. One thing I don't do is I don't hit somebody when they're down. And I don't hit pussies. If you're crying, I'll let you cry. I'll leave you alone. You know, I, I, don't, I don't do that kind of thing. I'm not a bully. And, but, but I'm going to demand respect. And, and, you know, that's what happened that day. Then after that, I went, you know, the next year I went back. But then I got into it with somebody else. And I'm like, you know, because what I think it is, you, with you too, I think that we have the stigma and personalities. And, you know, they consider me one of the biggest to ever play, not even the biggest player, one of the biggest villains. Uh, and you, one of the biggest to ever play Big Brother. So when people from our respected seasons come out there in these re you know charity events and they get drunk, they're jealous. That that's the bottom line. They get jealous because we get more attention than them, and uh, they want to buck up. They want to show their peacock feathers. Do you, you think that's the case? Well, I think with me and like when I almost got into it with Cody. <laughs> um, well, he almost got into it. He started, like, who starts shit at a charity event, number one? Let me point that out. Like, if you can't act like an adult at a charity event with and knowing how to behave yourself uh, and handle yourself, like, you shouldn't be coming in the first place, number one. Uh, the second thing is, like, with uh, Cody, I talk a lot of shit about people uh, online and so on and so forth, and I never direct it at them. I never at them on Twitter. Um, you know, but uh, I say a lot of things, and uh, I've said from the beginning that Cody was the biggest moron to ever play the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, sorry, but it, dude, it's true. Well, <laughs> off the subject, I like them guys. Like I get along with all three of them guys. Like they seem like really nice guys. I got along with them. You know, because we, me and you, we get along. Uh, and you know what? If you ever met, I don't know if you met Brandon or not, but you would love you. You have Brandon's. Uh, you know, man code like you or you or his personality to where you and him would get along. You would like Brandon, and because I know you. Well, we and you know, but, well, we but, met we met once at a uh, at a, a Survivor event in LA in a nightclub, and that was it was right it was after his season 
his first season, but before the second season aired, but he had already done the second season. Right. And he came up to me and he's like, Dick, you're going to love me this season, blah, 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 and all of this stuff. And when I saw it, I was just like, you know know why? You know why? What's wrong with this guy? But you know why he did that? Because he wants the best. He wants their respect. If he, he, if he has your respect, then, then he, you know, look, I'm not going to let, look, people think me and Brandon have it bad, but if Brandon was in a fight, I'm right there with him. If Brandon was on Survivor, I got his fucking back. He's my blood. He's my family. And what, well, he, was, what he was doing with you is he wanted your respect because he respected you so much. He wanted your respect for his gameplay. And you're not the kind of guy that's going to give respect where respect's not due. You know what I mean? Exactly. So Exactly. So but I, I know for a fact, too, Russell, that when he was on his second season, you had criticisms, criticisms of his game as of well. Of course. Of course, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not like you were, like, tearing him up or, like, just ripping the shit out of him. But, you know... Listen, you could criticize, there's, there's criticism to everybody's game. Even the best player that's ever played in either Survivor or Big Brother, they, there's inst- at some point, they fuck up. Everything doesn't go completely smooth all of the time. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it just is what it is. No, so, you're right. It doesn't. And, and uh, Brandon, you know, like outside the game, and we're talking about Cody and them, you know, I know for a fact that you would like him. But and Cody and them, like I liked, I met Cody, Derek, and uh, <clears throat> what's his name, uh, Rancy, Rancy Pants. Uh, so I met them all three at Give Kids the World. They seem like cool guys, but I'm going to be honest with you. When we were downstairs and I seen you being aggressive, I was like, if, if they would have, if anybody would have jumped you at that time, I would have had your back. And I'm not just saying this because you're on the, on the show with me. I was paying close attention after all that went down. No, dude, well, we've been friends for quite a while now. Yeah. Um, you, you know, I hosted that tattoo convention out in Houston, mm-hmm. invited you down, you came down. Uh, we had a great time the night before. You got so drunk, you had to be walked back to your hotel room. No, that's not, a, that's not true. I never, <laughs> I, I'm always coherent. <laughs> yeah, you were trying to... Get, I was keep we were oh, doing shot met, for shot, but I was you met I was my ex wife. You met I, my ex wife. Yeah, right? your ex wife. Your ex wife's really sweet. Uh, very nice. Very very nice. And I probably, um, made, I probably she, you, everybody's like Russell. You screwed up with that one, but whatever. I said you screwed up with that one. I know that's what I said. To <laughs> no, but yeah, would, no, we have a good time when we're together because we have, uh, and if people would actually know us and get to know us i think that they would like us and if she, but the thing is if we di- this is how we are you you just like i am if you disrespect me i'm coming for you i mean i have to yeah and if you know i'm and i'm the kind of guy that i'm not a bully i'm not going to kick you when you're down you know but i'm going to come for you if you say anything to me about my family or me then i have to defend that whether it's and it may be too aggressive to where it you know it def, it messes up your safe space, but you know I am who I am, and I can't change that, and I don't want to change that, dude. If I played some, yeah exactly if I played some kind of season like you did with my daughter, man, I look, look dude that that it wouldn't be fair for me because I would be so. Uh, trying to protect her. My job as a father is to protect my kids. Oh, dude, let me tell you, it wasn't easy because, you know, <laughs> there was a guy in the house, Dustin, uh, there was um, two gay guys that were ex-boyfriends in the house, and Joe was evicted early, and Dustin was still there, <clears throat> and so Dustin was talking all kinds of shit about my daughter, calling her a skank, mm. and like all of this shit, and yeah. I went up and I confronted him, and I'm like, um, you're calling my daughter a skank, but oh. yet you are the motherfucker... You're the motherfucker that on the first night in the house said that you had gonorrhea and you have the nerve to call mm-hmm. her a skank? Okay, gonorrhea boy. Right. You know, no, I can't handle that. Break. I can't handle that. I could not handle I would, I would legitimately get kicked out because uh, I don't agree with Willie's 
uh, getting kicked out because he that wasn't even a head but that was like a shoulder push because Joe bucks up to him so that was bullshit but that's another story with another podcast yeah. <laughs> that's a whole nother, that's a whole another story <laughs> right so anyway man uh, I sure appreciate you coming on the show man oh dude anytime you know it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun I always enjoy hanging out with you I always enjoy talking with you. Uh, so yeah, anytime, man. Yeah, man. If you ever want me to come on your show, uh, uh, Dick at Night, just let me know. I'll come on on there. I'll hit, I'll hit you up next season, man. All right, man. Because I, I'm gonna be watching it next season uh, closely. Because obviously, I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be airing. Do you live? You live in Florida, right? Yeah. Uh, I thought you was. I thought you may be in L.A. now. No, I, I moved from L.A. I've been, I left L.A. about. Seven years ago, I think. Yeah, because we're doing a live premiere party in, uh, for this upcoming season of Survivor uh, in L.A. Uh, if you're around, I'm going to invite you. If you're around, you can come. All right, cool. All right, brother. Well, I'll talk to you later, man. All right, sounds good. Have a good day, Russell. All right, man. You have a good one.